guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Johanna and for those of you who are new here, welcome. And for those of you who are returning, welcome back. Here on my channel, I do planner and planner related videos, DIY tutorials, budget videos, and the occasional new release video of items that I've listed to my Etsy shop. And if that is of interest to you, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you hit that little notification bell, you'll always be notified of one I do load a new video and if you could also comment like and share <laughs> that does help my channel grow and is truly appreciated so in this next part of my craft series this is number two of my craft series 2019 we are going to make a fun activity pack and these are some of the ones that I had made for a craft fair that I did a couple of years ago and they're just still in my stash so this is going to be the final product or could be uh, but I'm going to show you how to make the pocket that all of this is loaded into all right so let me put this away and I'll be right back so for this tutorial I'm going to just use a piece of white uh cardstock. This is actually 110 pound cardstock that you can get at your local office supply store. I thought this might be the easiest thing to get hold of and depending on what you're making it for uh, this probably has the biggest possibility range because if you're doing it for a little girl or a little boy the way that you can decorate this is either via stamps or washi. However, you can use pattern paper that you cut down. Um, I did test this and this is using a full sheet of 12 by 12. I didn't cut anything and that does make a, I'm pretty sure, a six inch square uh, pocket. So again, depending on either your budget or what you want to use this for, this might be a good way not to have to cut anything. I did take a 12 by 12 piece of paper and cut it down to 9 by 12 and it made this size right here so it's a bit more narrow than it is it's a bit more narrow than it is long. Sorry, I don't know why that escaped me. And the only difference between these two is one, I started with the paper um, facing down and this one I had the paper facing up. So that's really how you can change some of the design element on this project by way of if you're having a single-sided paper, then you're either going to have a full colored sheet with a band of white and then your back will be white or you will have just the band of whatever your pattern paper is um, most of it will be white and then the back will be that pattern paper now for some people this might be more interesting because you still have that pop there but you may want to put some ephemera or a label or you may want to do some stamping if this were for a birthday or a bar mitzvah or anything so it really just depends on your need that you decide which way this would go now for something like this because it is a directional paper um, because this has direction and this does not if you were to use a two-sided uh, you probably wouldn't want to decorate it at all and then you would just want to be aware of what's going to be showing up because this would probably look really cute as these big sections and then just having the strip of the polka dot going down but again well I'll, I'll do it so I, I can show you how that would work but just be aware that if you are using single-sided paper double-sided paper or what we'll do in the first part of this uh, just a white piece of paper how you can change up the look of it so there's no special tools actually needed for this. You would take your paper. Now, I'm using US sizes, but if you are international, whatever your sheet of paper is, um, whether it's eight and a half by 11 like this, or smaller or bigger, the steps are exactly the same because we're not measuring anything. Basically, you're going to fold this in half and it doesn't matter which way because both sides will be folded. Now I chose to use a heavier cardstock just to give it some oomph. 
but that isn't necessary because the paper that I used in both the one that I had at my craft fair as well as those examples I showed you are quite thin but I actually don't have regular copy paper I only have this stuff so use what you have so this is the first fold then you open it up and then you do the next fold and you don't need a scoring tool, although I suppose if you had one, you could just measure half, score it, fold it. But I mean, we're trying to make this as simple as possible. Especially if it's something that you're gonna be mass producing, you want to try to keep your costs low. If it's either for like a favor for a party or if you're doing this for a craft fair. And the sky's the limit by way of what you can use this for, whether it is for a party, bar mitzvah, if it's for um, Thanksgiving, if it's for Christmas, if it's for a holiday in your country where people gather, uh, whether it's for a church function. I mean, again, whatever you put here is, is really, it, it doesn't matter uh, so long as it fits the theme of whatever function you're doing, okay? So what I did was I folded and folded. So we have the four quadrants and then on the left-hand side, you're going to want to cut a slit in that middle fold all the way up until the center. And that's the center right there. And then it's it can get confusing, so you may want to rewind this bit for a little while or a few times, but you're going to fold this down. There's no measurements because I don't know what piece of paper you're using, but really what you want to do you want to have a good firm fold and you want to leave if you can see that that's the line going down there now no when you're doing this don't don't do that <laughs> but I just I wanted you to see that there is probably like an inch and a quarter inch and a half gap there and that would be the first pocket and then this one you're going to fold up and then you're going to fold down. And basically, when you're folding this one down, you want to be able to see that band there. And then, and the reason why I'm folding up is so that um, it is closed at the bottom. Now, this was inspired by Lindsay. Um, who is a frugal crafter here on YouTube, and I will link her channel below. And she did it a little differently because there was a gap, but I just, I think this is easier. Now there is some wasted paper, so you could cut this if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna fold it so that I have what is my pocket, okay? So I've got a pocket there, and I've got a pocket there. Now the reason why I think it being totally cool to use just white paper or just, you know, if you've got pink paper, blue paper, whatever, just a, a solid piece of paper is because then you can introduce washi. Now to washi this whole thing, you would hate your life and it's not very efficient. However, to washi a strip right there is actually rather simple because it's just the one and you could be super fussy, but I promise you whatever kid this goes to is not going to care about what it came in. They're not gonna care about this or your craftsmanship. All they're gonna care about is the stuff in it. So don't waste a lot of time on this part. In fact, just fold it in and you've got a nice edge and then you want to fold this back up and look, you've got something really cute there. And then to close it up, use the same washi if you want to bring some more color in. Although I think clear tape would work just as well. And you would just tape all of your edges. And again, if you have just a single 
colored page like this, then you may wanna do that like that and then add your washi, either the same or corresponding on the sides because we need something to hold this together. Okay, and then you would just bring that there. Now because it is a washi, this is not going to last forever, especially if you fill it up quite thickly, then it's gonna to want to come off because while it's tacky, it's not that tacky. And so again, that changes the look of it already. And then you can do the side. Now I suppose if you wanted to make this a lot more sturdier, you could do the washi like this. Probably gonna to wanna to go slower <laughs> so that your washi's on straight. And bring it closer to you. Again, when I do filming, I try to keep it so that it's hopefully in frame. I don't measure, I mean, obviously, but I mean, that's not even, and I don't care, because I promise you, the kit that you give this to is not going to care. This will probably be destroyed within two seconds of them getting it, because they're gonna wanna know what's inside. And I would cut where the pocket goes and then rub that down so that it opens easily. And I just use an X-Acto because the blade is thin, but if you've got a thinner scissor than this, then it, it would cut that. But this one, the, the point is quite thick, so that, that would not work. Okay, and then you can do the top as well. And just to make it a finished edge. And what Lindsay recommended in her video was you start from the back for this top one, and then it's easier to fold in for this part. And like I was saying, if you wanted to, to give it more of the ability to be sturdy, you may wanna do the washi, and then you may wanna do the clear tape around the washi. That, that's totally up to you. And in this space right here, you could put uh, a die cut, you could do a stamp, you could... Now, I, I, I wouldn't recommend this. I wouldn't recommend busting out your sticker book and using the sticker book. Unless it's a sticker book you purposely bought for that purpose. I, I don't know. But it's here, and so we'll use it. So we'll put birthday there. And... I just saw, we'll put a balloon there. Nope. Again, when you're putting this together for whatever your purpose is, you may wanna figure that out beforehand. But essentially, what you've done is you've created pockets to stuff things in. Now again, because this paper is quite thick, um, it doesn't really want to budge, but I mean, you can maneuver it so that it does you know, work the way you want to. Oh, and the way that we folded it, we actually have three pockets. I don't know if you can see that, but really it was only designed to have the two. So. Let me open up one of the other ones so that I can show you what I put in some of mine. And we'll open this one here. And this is the way that I package it to sell. So I had a, a clear bag. It's not gusseted or anything. I made this topper with some coordinating um, paper. And then I made this label so that people would know what's inside because a lot of it's hidden. So I wanted uh, my customers to be able to see this. And then when you open it up, it is sealed because that's just the kind of bags that I had. And then when you take it out, 
what I had included in mine. And as you can see, like I said, the washi is not super permanent. And because it's thick, that was already sliding out, but it doesn't matter. I don't think the kid would care. Or if they did, you could just do some surgery like that, all right? So they've got some four crayons. I made some tags out of that same heavy cardstock, and this one I don't even have a punch. So I made a rectangle, cut some triangles, punched it with a hole punch. Done. Uh, there is some butcher's twine that I included because if they wanted to decorate this and then hang it on the tree, that'd be cool. And then in this back pocket, what I had done was I included some emoji stickers that I picked up. Kids love stickers. Made some bookmarks, again, out of the same paper. The dimensions don't matter as long as it fits in there. So depending on how big or small yours is, you could make this bigger or smaller. I wouldn't recommend having it much bigger than the top of your page. So if this is five and a half because it was originally an 11 long paper, then you probably don't want your bookmarks much taller than that because then it'll bend. But again, that's the only constraint you have. And then some blank pieces of paper to color on. Here on, I think it is a to Z teacherstuff.com, I was actually able to make my own little word search and I will put the link to that below. Now I did this a couple of years ago. I'm assuming that it's still there, but I just put words in and then it was able to make this word search for me. Now because I sold at a local craft fair, um, I just use words that people would know, like locomoco, malasada, teriyaki pork, etc. But if you're making your own, then you just want to make sure, or you want to do it either birthday words for a birthday party, Hanukkah, Diwali, Ramadan, I mean, any of those things, you could make words that are specific to that activity. Uh, this I had found uh, it was a set, I believe, of 12 in the party supply section in Walmart. It's one of those favor things, and it's just a ruler stencil, and I thought that the kids could use this to color in. And then I took a coloring page and cut it down into um, pieces that would fit. Again, I can't give you the dimensions of this because I don't know what you're going to be doing, although this particular dimension is four by a little less than five and a half. And what I did, because I'm super extra, because <laughs> you notice it's all stuck together. So I had clipped it together and I made bunches and bunches of these. Actually thinking about it, I probably just clipped a whole bunch of these together. So cut up an entire coloring book and then clamped them together and then ran some white glue at the top there to make my own pad so that this wouldn't fly away. One, because I think it looks a lot more professional and two, I'm super extra. <laughs> you wouldn't need to do that. You could staple it, you could leave it blank. I mean. It's really up to you, but that's the way that I put it together because what I did was I took my coloring book, cut up all the sheets, made a big thick pack, and then ripped off very carefully um, sections of it just so that I can stick in here. And then I think this makes a fun little activity pack for whatever celebration that you're doing and it's something fun for the kids, and if you package it up real cute, um, I think it's something that the parents will appreciate as well. Now, the reason why I wanted to do this particular craft is, um, you're probably wondering what pack of crayons I got this from, because what exactly are those? Well, they're crayons, and I, in the back to school sale that's currently going on here, in the US anyway, I don't know if this is, um, um, international, but I would just pick up several boxes of crayons and then, with no reason, just randomly, I would choose four colors that were not too similar 
and that's what the kid would get. Now I try not to give white because you, I mean, unless you're giving something that's colored, uh, the white won't show. So we've got orange, lime green, and blue, and let's do pink. Again, that might not be the colors that the child likes, but with this here was two hundred. $2 in, in like 47 cents. If I do sets of four, even factoring in um, this broken one and the white one, uh, you can still get lots of bang for your buck with this. Because again, if you're making this for a craft fair, then you want to be aware of what your costs are because you do want to turn a profit. Now, that's a lesson that I have difficulty with, but, you know, I, I strive. But if you're doing this for, like, a party favor, then you still want to keep your, your costs low because, especially if you're making quite a bit of these, um, you don't want your favors to just be that much of an additional expense. So I'll put these in here. And this is just what I did for mine. You certainly wouldn't need to do all of these things. Um, it's just because I had the intention of selling it, I wanted to make it as much bang for their buck as I personally could make it. And I think I was selling these, honestly, I don't even know, but probably like three or four dollars. It was a round number. I didn't do anything with cents on it. Um, and this I thought because it was Christmas themed, would make uh, really good stocking stuffers. So this one, um, this was something I'd also picked up, if you can see it, it is a watercolor set. And I believe it was one of those um, I bought in a section where they sell the favors. And then this one is colored pencils that are small and then a Christmas theme eraser. And that only came with the colored pencils because that's the only thing it would be useful for. But the guts of it would be exactly the same in all of these. It's just whatever was the decoration, the eraser, and then again, d depending on the, the different style, I thought that would be really good for my customers. Now the last thing we're gonna do in this video, and let me clean up the space and I'll be right back. All right guys, so the last thing we're gonna do in this video is we're going to use this double-sided piece of paper just so that you get a feel of what that would look like. Because you've seen it with just one colored paper, you've seen it with one-sided paper, and let's see how it would look with a two-sided paper. And the thing I cut there um, was just a little branding spot on it. And we're gonna just keep it at 12 by 12. There's no point in cutting it. I'm not gonna actually use this. And hopefully you can see this, but we're cutting. We're gonna do exactly the same. Again, whatever paper you're using, whatever size it is, doesn't matter. You would just use the same technique. If you have a bone folder, you can use that. Otherwise, just use some sort of a flat edge to go ahead and make it as solid as you can. You don't need this to be perfect. Like you said, that, I mean, I don't know that the child will care. I don't know that the parent of the child will care. <laughs> um, even if you made something like this um, for a work activity or a church activity, I don't think they would care, honestly. And if they did, well, let them make a few. <laughs> All right, so like the other one, and I think it might be easier here. I don't know why I turned it. It's a perfect square, but <laughs> I'm just going to cut the left side like we did in that first example. We're gonna cut it right on that fold line all the way to the center point. And so that the cut side is on the left side. We're going to fold this down. Again, it doesn't, oh. Okay, well, I made a mistake <laughs> because yeah, that's, all right, well, <laughs> let's just say that's an example of what not to do. B, 
be aware of how your paper is facing. So we're going to want to cut this side. <laughs> oh, that wasn't embarrassing at all. So I guess that's one hazard of using a double-sided piece of paper because when the other ones, that's not something I actually cared about. <laughs> All right, let's, what? All right, I guess we're gonna have to do it this way because I'm not cutting again. All right, so like we did in the first one, you want, if this is the center line, you want to fold it down so that there is a gap. Doesn't matter how big the gap is, you just want a gap. This is probably closer to two inches than the other one was. And then you just put that down and you fold this over. Okay, and so you don't actually see a lot of that and that doesn't look as fussy as I thought it would. So that's good. And then we're going to fold up again because I sliced it. But I have to be very careful. I'm not going to use this, so it doesn't matter. But just, just be aware. And oh. <laughs> Let's see. And that's even worse. <laughs> okay. So maybe don't use directional paper. <laughs> okay. I'm not even going to edit this out. I mean, I, I'd rather I make the mistake than you buy all this nice paper and you make the mistake because <laughs> that's really sad. <laughs> okay, well, the back looks nice. I'm not going to lie. So, yeah, don't use a directional paper. I don't see how that would work. I don't see how that would work with, with the way that the paper is. And I suppose you could do that. Yeah, no, that's just a total loss right there. Because, I mean, we still have our two pockets. That's really not what the issue is. The issue is the way the pattern was. All right, guys. Well, that wasn't as great as tutorial as I'd like it to be. <laughs> but I'm glad we're ending on an awesome note. <laughs> so, again, in the earlier part, um, if you do want to go over this a little bit more. Again, just rewind and then just watch how I folded it. This one, again, I really wanted to show you how it would be with a two-sided paper. I think a two-sided paper that was not directional would be great for this. This one, not so much because we can get that upright, but we can't get that upright. It is what it is. All right, guys, that's it for me. Let me know what you think of not only uh, this activity pack, but of the craft series. I don't know if I'll be doing one every single week, but because it is the back to school sale, um, tapering to an end, uh, if you can find some deals on crayons or those little, um, watercolor sets or, or color pencils or whatever, I think now will be the time to stock up for that, even if it isn't for the upcoming coming holiday season. Again, it could be for birthdays, it could be for school events, it could be for work events, church events, whatever it is that you've got going on. And I think it makes really fun activity packs that if you do it in assembly line style, uh, can be very cost effective and just very fun for the recipient who is getting it. All right, guys, that is it for me. And as always, aloha.